Hey guys, good morning. Um, I have been looking forward to doing this video for a very long time, a uh, good couple of months at least, and I am so excited to go over everything related to oil and oil change and how to check different things related to the oil on a ZX6R. So today I'm going to be using a 2022 ABS KRT model, but this should apply to any bike out there, but you're going to follow along using your book, your manual, all this stuff. And if you just so happen to have a 2019 plus Kawasaki ZX6R, then you're going to be able to kind of use this video step by step to check everything. So I'm looking forward to getting into this. So I'm going to start right off at the top. Let's do it. All right, so first and foremost, let's say you just bought your ZX6R and you're coming up on the break-in 600-mile period or whatever have you, and you're starting to hit the point where you know that either one year has elapsed or you know that you've gone about 3,000 miles since your last oil change and you need to kick off the ball here and really try to figure out what are you doing, what's going on, how do I change my oil, what are my options? And I'm going to walk you through every single thing. So please, if you already know how to do a particular thing, don't be afraid to skip ahead. I'm going to walk you through this like you've never done an oil change in your life and show you all the torque specs, the books, everything. So let's kick it off saying, okay, uh, I got my oil changed at 600 miles. The dealership did it because I didn't want to touch it the first time. But hey, you know what? I'm coming up on 3,600 now or 4,000 miles. And you're like, you know what? It's getting to about that time that I need to change my oil. When should I change my oil? How should I change my oil? The very first thing you can do is go straight to the manual. Now I'm going to cut over to the book and show you page by page what the owner's manual says for the ZX6R. Alrighty guys, so here we are with the Ninja ZX6R owner's manual. Again, mine's a 2022, but let's see, let's flip right up into this. Alrighty. Engine oil. So we're on page 119, and very first and foremost, if the engine is cold, make sure you warm it up first. Whether you take it to idle or you ride it for a little while and then check it after you're done with a ride. The big thing about this is that if you check your engine oil or the window while the engine is completely cold, like first thing in the morning, you could get a false low oil reading. So after it's nice and hot, it's been going through the filter, everything looks good, you can check the engine oil through the inspection window. Now the inspection window, you'll be able to see, is located right here, right through this little hole here. You'll see the top line, the bottom line, and that's going to show you right here. You'll see you got a low bar and a high bar, and you want to make sure the oil is sitting right between those. Now if you're low, you know, it's easy. Just throw some oil in, no problem. But what type of oil? We'll get to that. So after you got all that set up, if it's too high, don't overfill it. You know, that's why I'm saying make sure your engine is warm before you check it because then you could end up with some issues and accidentally overfill your bike. All right, so let's get to the next page. All right, so first and foremost, it wants to tell you that the oil and oil filter change should always be done by an authorized Kawasaki dealer. Oil changes are extremely easy. If you're not a fan of getting ripped off like a hundred plus dollars for an oil change, you can do it yourself for half the cost. You just have to be willing to take the time. And the best thing to do is when you know you're starting to get close to an oil change, just check the weather and find a good rainy day like I did where it's all crappy outside. You don't want to be out riding in this and you got the day off. Nothing. Yeah. So nothing's good going on anyway you might as well change your oil. It's a real fast process. I'm going to drag it out very long because I'm doing a video for anyone. But um, So the very first thing you should know that the Kawasaki is going to do is they're going to use a special Kawasaki brand mineral oil. Okay, So you don't need to use this mineral oil. And 
If you do want to, if you'd rather stick with Kawasaki's oil, then that's totally fine. They sell engine oil kits online, Amazon, etc. Just make sure you get the correct kit for your bike, okay? All right, so next. Next thing you're going to want to know is the oil drain bolt underneath the bike needs to be torqued to 21 foot-pounds, okay? So if you do not have a torque wrench, do not even do this. Don't even start unless you plan on squitting it. Okay, so the oil filter itself, which is located on the opposite end of the bike, needs to be torqued to 13 foot-pounds. And then it tells you all the Kawasaki good stuff, viscosity. Now, it tells you right here, you need 10W40, okay? 10W40 is the Kawasaki brand of oil they use, but they know that people aren't going to want to pay that much for special Kawasaki mineral oil. So here's what they did for us on the next page. They decided to give us a nice little thing here saying, although 10W40 engine oil is recommended oil for most conditions the viscosity may need to be changed to accommodate atmospheric conditions in your area so what that really means is if you look at this right here whether you're using celsius or fahrenheit 10w40 will take you from 14 fahrenheit and you're good all the way up to 104 degrees temperature Sure, you could use 10W50, it gives you a much broader range, because chances are, let's be honest, you're not riding when it's under 32 Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. You're probably not doing it, but you're going to want to pick something that is appropriate for your bike. And they recommend 10W40, and I also use 10W40. I'll show you exactly what I personally use. And when you use it, make sure you always... You see the capacity here. You're doing a full change. So chances are you're going to be using equal to or greater than 3.3 U.S. quarts. So it's best to just grab four bottles of whatever you're using. So me personally, I am a big fan of this stuff right here. The Mobile One Racing 4T 10W40. This stuff's pretty solid. I've never had an issue with it. But... Similar to what is your favorite brand of vehicle, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody knows somebody who's had a bad experience with something, and everybody knows somebody who's had a good experience with something. So I'm using two controversial items. Some people I've told I've been told, Mobile One, it's the way to go. Don't even try anything else. And I've had other people say Mobile One is terrible. Don't use it buy the mineral oil it's up to you what you want to do i've never had an issue with it but i'm going to show you the next thing that i've also gotten some controversy over the next item i've had a lot of controversy over is these k n uh oil filters for motorcycles um i can't tell you how many reviews and how many people i've seen that told me oh i tried using that and I've had oil problems and it's been leaking and all this other stuff. I've been using them. I've never had an issue with them. But hey, you know, maybe their bike, maybe their thing, maybe they bought the, the wrong type. I don't know. I mean, the one for the 636 is 303. You see that little white number there with the black? That is the uh, specific number you want to find for an oil filter for the ZX6R. Now... I'm going to just explain very quickly why I do recommend the K&N. It's because all the people who said they've had issues with them are people who ride on the track to the point where some tracks actually will not allow you to ride on it if you have a K&N filter on it because of how many issues they've had with the bikes being tracked with a K&N filter. Now, I don't ride my bike on the track. So for me, a K&N filter had absolutely no issue. Who knows? Maybe if I took it on a track, I'd have an issue. It's, it's up for debate. So the reason why I love these filters over any other filter is because if you don't have this filter, you're going to have to have some sort of oil filter remover tool 
And based on where it's positioned on the ZXXR, it's very hard to get to. It's not comfortable. It's a swear-inducing amount of work to get it out. But this K&N filter, guess what it's got? I'll tell you. Look at that. It's got a bolt, like a big nut head right on the end of the filter. So when I need to remove it, easy peasy. I don't care. Just put it right on, put a socket right on there and torque it to where it's supposed to be, which we just saw in the book, where you're supposed to torque your oil filter to. So to me, it's been working great. Just don't track your bike with a K&N oil filter based on reviews. All right, so you've determined that you look through the looking glass, you're within the operating range, it's been a good couple of miles, how do you know that you need one, right? If the oil is nice and amber colored, you don't need an oil change unless you're one of the people that say, hey, I'm going to change my oil either one year or X amount of miles. Okay, so what does Kawasaki recommend for how many miles? Because we didn't see it in those couple pages. If you go through that manual, eventually you'll find a second oil page section where it recommends that you change the oil between 3,000 or 7,000 miles. That's a big difference, and they just put based on riding conditions. Well, what do you mean? Okay, so what they're saying is, is if you are racing the bike, if you are beating the bike up, if you are, every day you ride it, you take it to red line in at least first or second gear all the time, chances are you're gonna wanna be closer to 3,000. Um, I've had other uh, people in the Pittsburgh area that identify themselves as squid riders tell me that if their bike says 3,000 to 7,000, 3,500 is the number. That's where they change their oil. Well, I wouldn't consider myself a squid, but I've pushed the bike hard all the time, and I've gotten it up to over 160 on the speedometer, not GPS, before all the hate comments roll in a good couple of times. So... I personally, I'm doing it at 3,000 on the dot, just so I don't gotta worry about it. But you should check your oil window all the time because the ZX6Rs are notorious that if you're constantly getting it over 10,000 uh, RPM, that it will eat a little bit of oil every time you do it. So it is notorious for eating oil. Make sure that you add oil when you need to. So. How do you check the oil? All right, the window's great, but let's get into that. This little window right here is fantastic to use, but here's the issue with it, right? If you have the bike just standing up and it's sitting on its kickstand, the bike is way too leaned over to get an accurate reading, okay? So what you need to do is to either be sitting on it so it is perfectly balanced and then you lean over and read the reading with your phone or something i usually from when i'm sitting on it i'll hit record on a video and then drop my hand down low to the right to see the window and then i watch my two three second video that i just took to find the level reading because if you're sitting on it you might not even notice it but when you lean over to check the oil you might accidentally take it out of perfect alignment with your body since you're leaning giving you another false reading, which again, just like the book said, never check the oil cold. Always check it hot because then you won't get a false reading. So the best thing you can do is to find a nice level ground, right? So my garage, it's pretty level. It obviously, it swoops a little bit towards the drain, but for the most part, it's very level. So the next thing you're going to want to do before you check your oil is to make sure the bike is even. If you're not gonna sit on it and try your best to balance it, you should put it on a stand. But if you are like me and you decided to buy the absolute best pit bull stand you can find, you have to make sure that you adjust. Don't just throw it up on these things and think you're doing what you're supposed to do. Because back here, these are adjustable and they always come 
from the factory completely pushed down. You got to set them up, make sure it's accurate for your bike and measure it out to make sure that the front end is being lifted the same exact amount that the back is going to lift it because you need your bike level, okay? So I already adjusted mine for the ZX6R. I've found that if I leave approximately three bubble spaces before I lock those in, it's pretty dang even within a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna put it back on these stands and show you the next step. In case anyone wants to see how you do this, you get it all nice and lined up. You're not grinding against anything. Yep, see how the both the reds are pushed away? This one could come over just a little bit. See, now it's relatively eh, even. And now you just crank down, you just push down on it. And it lifts the bike right off the ground. Easy peasy. All right, so the bike is perfectly level now. It's up on that stand, it's up on that stand. You can now, without sitting on the bike, Come over here and check your oil. It is very hard to see where it's at um, on the camera, but you can just barely see the two lines where you want it to sit between. It's very hard to see it on the camera right now, but I swear that's generally the best way to do it is to lift the front up, lift the back up. That way you can get directly on the side and see it straight on because even... You can't just look at it with your head over here because it's going to show a downward angle and a dysphoric uh, reading will show. You have to be level with the looking glass to know what you're seeing. All right. Okay. So let's say you're at 4,000 miles. So you got your oil changed at about 600 where you're supposed to. You're now at 4,000. So you put about 3,400 miles on the bike. You're due for an oil change. The very first thing you did was you checked your book, you saw what you needed to do, you got the stands, you got it lifted up off the ground, you know what your oil level's at, everything's good and kosher. What's your next step? Make sure before you start, you have everything you need. First and foremost, I'll go through the whole list. I'm not going to miss a single thing, okay? We're going to go through the whole list of what you need. All right, so make sure you have an oil filter to put on. Make sure you have at least four quarts of whatever oil you plan on using. Make sure that you have an oil drain pan. That's going to be in a lot. You got to make sure you have some appropriate tools. So for me, on the particular drain plug under there, which I'll show you, I used a 11 16 and it worked flawlessly on it. But again, don't forget, Kawasaki is Japanese. Everything Japanese based is going to be in millimeters. But if you don't have the perfect millimeter, it doesn't hurt to have a backup American size. And last but not least, you're going to want to make sure you've got a crush washer. This goes between your oil drain bolt and the uh, oil pan itself. It also helps if you have a beverage of your choice. Again, you already know you want to have your stands, whether it's Pitbull brand or not, is up to you. You'll probably want a chair to kick back and relax a little bit. Make sure you've got a funnel and you're going to want paper towels and probably a plastic baggie to drop anything you're going to be throwing away. Now, depending on where you buy your oil, uh, you're going to want to know whether or not they'll take your old oil for free. I bought all of this stuff from like an AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts type deal, and they all take your oil back for free. So... Now let's get started on exactly how to perform this maintenance. Now that we've determined, yes, we need an oil change. Yes, we have the tools and materials because the only thing I didn't show on camera that you need yet is a torque wrench. Make sure you have a torque wrench. Do not do this if you don't have a torque wrench. Now, so we've got all of our tools. We're ready to go. So what do we have to start with? Again, we put it up on the stands. Life is good. Let's do this step by step.
Right, so if you can choose between laying on the right side of the bike or the left side of the bike, be on the left side of the bike, but I got the Corvette kind of in the way, so I'm just kind of working with what I got right now. So I'm going to be working on the right side, but work on this, the kickstand side if you can, and I'll show you why right now. All right, so you can see where the oil is dripping just a little bit right about there. You see where it's dripping out? That's exactly where your drain plug bolt is going to be. It's going to be screwed in right in there. And you're going to need to break that loose. But as you can see, since I'm laying on the wrong side, I have all this nonsense in my way. But I can't lay on that side because the Corvette's there. So we're just going to make the best of it. So first and foremost... Go ahead and take your main thing out here, your fill plug, because that's going to give it a nice bit of air pressure. And then you're going to want to take this off here, and it'll drain every all your oil right into your oil pan. Now, I knew that this was going to take a long time for it to drain flawlessly, because after you get that out of there and it's coming down, it's not a bad idea to take the front stand out so that the front is lower than the back so it all drips out and then once you got all your oil in there you got that set up life is pretty good next you're going to want to take your oil filter off and if you were smart and had an oil filter that has one of those bolts on there you'll be happy to know this is very easy let's get on to that now that we're on this side of the bike there's your filter right there. It's right above your front sprocket, right over the K. It's right there. You're going to want to take that off. Now, if you can see it in the camera here, there's a little lip, a plastic lip here. They know that they put that filter way in there and then it's going to drip out. So ideally what they did was, so whenever you take that filter off and oil starts dripping out of there, it's going to fall into this plastic funnel piece they built and it's going to drip right out of this edge piece which drops directly onto your front sprocket which is something you really don't want happening. So the best thing you can do is stuff some paper towels in there before you start taking this filter out. So let me get my paper towels and I'll get the proper socket and read it off to you before I do this next step. Alrighty, so I got that uh, stuffed in there apparently coincidentally almost like kn knew what they were doing the 11 16ths i used on the oil drain bolt works perfectly on the edge of this filter which is awesome and i got my glove on now all you're gonna have to do is get that in there and break it loose lefty loosey oh look at that like a dream broke open like a dream let's just give it a good old spin a spin a spinny Spinny, spinny. Oh, see how it's coming out of there? See how it's coming out? Oh, that's terrible. That's awful. Oh, boy. Hold on. Alrighty, so I spilled oil absolutely everywhere. But thankfully, when it ran down and came out the bottom, it dripped right into the pan. So that was cool. But, uh... Yeah, I've seen other people use cardboard and like curl it and shove it up in there. I don't have cardboard, unfortunately. It kind of like extends that funnel. Uh, I wish I'd have had that. I heavily recommend doing that in the future. The paper towel idea did not work so well. All right, next step. Oh yeah, and if you're ever checking your oil or looking at stuff and you notice that in here, it's really hard to see, but there looks like a couple of black drips there. Let me see if I can... Yeah. Um, that's actually not oil dripping out of anything. That's actually the chain cleaner. Um, when it follows your chain to the front sprocket, it shoots its shit all the way up inside here. And then as you apply cleaner to it next time, it melts it and makes it drip out the bottom here. And then it hits right there and it makes it look like your bike's leaking oil, but it's not. It's just the oil cleaner uh, messing with that. But it is a good idea to take that off and clean that grease trap out as like every couple thousand miles. Okay, the oil filter is off. Crisis averted. I cleaned it up best I could. 
still dripping a little bit. I got my baggie where I put all my garbage and I put the filter in there. Life is pretty good. All right, so go ahead and get your new filter out and it's gonna have that protective film over it to make sure nothing got inside of it, which is a really good idea. We're gonna remove this film and then we'll get right into the next bit. All right, so we got our film off and everything looks good to go. Try your hardest not to get anything in there or get it contaminated by any means. So what you're gonna wanna do is stick your finger in that oil underneath here just a little bit. And then you're gonna wanna run your finger along this edge here, all the way around. You're gonna wanna do it all the way around. And what that'll do is kinda lube this part here so that way when you put it on and crank it down and torque it to the proper measurement that it doesn't get hung up or anything it's going to smoothly click to where you need it all right let's do it okay so you're going to want to use a deep well for this because uh it gets really really tight and a short uh socket is not going to be able to work you're going to need a uh, deep well socket, but it gets torqued to 13 foot pounds. Now, if you don't have a foot pound torque wrench and you have to use an inch pound torque wrench, make sure that what you're doing is 13 times 12, which is like 156. So you'll want to torque it to 156 inch pounds or 13 foot pounds. And then once it clicks, you know you're good to go for the to that filter. The next one is going to be putting your drain bolt back in. So you're going to want to make sure that you've got your drain bolt. Get your crush washer. Put it on your drain bolt. And then this is going to get torqued in. You're going to want to torque this puppy in to 21 foot pounds. Or 21 times 12 if you're using an inch. Uh, which would come out to... 252 inch pounds and you're going to want to torque this in back underneath where this goes and then uh, we'll use a paper towel wipe up all that little drippy oil there and then boom we'll have a sealed oil filter torqued to the 13 this will be in there plugging the drain hole for 21 foot pounds and then all we got to do is put oil in it so let's get moving Okay, all right, so that's in and torqued. The filter's in and torqued. The only thing left that we should have to do is there's the cap for the fill. Here's the fill right here. And based on our book, no matter what, it's gonna take over three quarts. So we already have our four quarts of oil right here and ready to go. So we're just gonna dump three in right away. So we're gonna just dump one, two, and three in before we do anything else, cause that should put us at still low. Alrighty, here we go. All right, and then make sure you hold on to these empty bottles because these empty bottles are what we're gonna put that oil in so that we can take these back down to AutoZone or wherever you got so we can recycle the oil. All right, once you got your oil in there, you wanna start it up. And uh, as you'll see, I already put my cap back on. So everything is in there. I've measured everything out. You wanna keep a really close eye to make sure your oil filter is not leaking. And you wanna make sure that your drain plug is not leaking at all. And then once it gets up to temperature, shut the bike off, recheck your oil level using the window to know if you need to add more or what you gotta do. All right, I just let it run and get up the temperature a little bit. And now we're gonna recheck our little eyeglass. And as you can see right there, it says that I'm still pretty, I'm within rideable range, but I'm at the low end. So I'm gonna throw some more oil in and then we'll do it again. All right, I just added some more and now it says I'm perfectly in line with the high line. So now I'm gonna start it up, let it run for several minutes again and see where it says. All right, just ran it again for a few minutes and yep, see that? We're a little lower than we were, but we're well within operating range. So I'm gonna live with it. And even though it's kind of a crappy day out, 
next time I ride it, I'm going to pay attention to that and kind of see where I got to go from there. Um, but in the meantime, the last thing we have to do is put those bottle, that dirty oil into these bottles and then we're all set to go. All right, let's uh, finish that up. And then once you've got every, all your oil contained, it's best to throw it in a bag and then take it down to wherever you plan on disposing of it, whether it be AutoZone or whoever. Um, whoever has a free service is best. All right, thank you guys. That is, in its entirety, how to do an oil change on your ZX6R. It's pretty straight and dry, pretty cut forward. I mean, it took me a lot longer than it normally would because I did an in every single step-by-step, -step, went through the manual, read everything off, so by all means you guys will go through it a lot faster as you kind of get used to different odds and ends and kind of get a feel for it so otherwise i wish you guys the best of luck and uh have a good rest of your day all right peace